Hey everyone, BB75 here, aka Vince Salerno. It's that wonderful time of year again. It's Christmas time. It's a time for giving and receiving. It's a time for being with family and friends. It's a time for caroling. Time for eating good food and sweets and Christmas trees and lights and snow and snowmen. For good music. It's a time for Jesus' birthday. Jesus was born on Christmas. How cool is that? Speaking of which, found my Santa hat. So we're good to go. It's the most wonderful time of year, as they say. My favorite time of year besides summer. Not only for all the reasons I mentioned, but also because of one big thing I'm a huge fan of. Star Wars. Since last year, Star Wars has become a big Christmas and family tradition around the holiday season. Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, came out last year to huge huge numbers. Almost became the highest grossing film of 2015 and the most highest grossing film of all time. Damn you, James Cameron! We'll get there, guys. We'll get there. So I had the great pleasure of going to see the film Midnight when it came out. I went with my brother Victor, who's also a big Star Wars fan. He and I grew up with Star Wars together, so it was very funny that he and I went together. We also went with my friends Rose and Jeff, as you can see in the picture right here. This general area. We all had a great time, we all loved the movie, and it was a great family, friends, tradition for December, and now it's become ingrained into the Christmas time. So Disney announced that we will be getting a new Star Wars film every single year. Right now it's just going to be one, rumor has it that we'll probably move up to two eventually, which I hope does not happen. So this year, the film that's coming out from Lucasfilm, from the Star Wars brand, is the first Star Wars spin-off prequel, Rogue One. A Star Wars story. This film centers on a band of rebel spies led by Jen Erso, played by Felicity Jones, um, who are trying to steal the plans for the Empire's new weapon, the Death Star, which is being overseen by director Orson Krennic, an Imperial officer director, played by Ben Mendelsohn, who's fantastic in everything he does. There's rumors of Princess Leia showing up, Darth Vader is definitely in this movie. A lot of rumors of, of, of um, classic Star Wars characters showing up in this movie. Um, a lot of great reasons to be excited for Rogue One, and yet there is one person, two people, one person I know that is not as excited for Rogue One, and it's me. Now hold on, I know what you're thinking, but Vince, you're like one of the biggest Star Wars fans out there! How can you not be excited for Rogue One, a Star Wars movie? And the reason, well, there's a lot of reasons why I'm not excited for Rogue One, most of which I cannot fit into one co coherent sentence. I mean, it'd probably take me like 10 minutes to tell you why I'm not excited for Rogue One, which is why I'm making a video to tell you the top three reasons why I am not excited for Rogue One. Now, quick disclaimer, when I say not, those are big quotations, not excited for Rogue One. Well, I'll explain why the quotations of not excited for Rogue One uh, in a little bit. Reason number one, the time period. We've been at this period between episode three and episode four so many times with so much content. The bulk of what we've seen from Star Wars before The Force Awakens was all after episode three and before episode four. I'm talking about most significantly The Force Unleashed, The Force Unleashed 2, and the most recent show, Rebels. Now, these things aren't terrible, but we've been between this time period so many times that I don't want to go back to it anymore. I don't want to see between episode 3 and 4. We kind of know what happens. That's the time where the Empire grows stronger and the Rebels start to form and become the Rebellion. We know that's what happens, albeit now I don't think Force Unleashed is canon anymore. I do not think Starkiller is a canon character in the universe. Maybe he'll show up in Rogue One! I don't know! Reason number two. There's no connection to the original cast members, original trilogy characters, or even some of the new characters that we've met. So this is a new batch of characters we've never met before, never seen before, never even heard of before. Jin Erso, Donnie Yen's character, Diego Luna's character, K2SO, Bodhi, is there another one? I don't think there's another one. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting the rest of them. I can't even remember their names because we never met these characters before. We have no, there's no connection 
to the new, the original trilogy, or even the new trilogy, or even the prequel trilogy. You have Darth Vader, who is obviously Anakin Skywalker, but he is a minor character in this movie. Now, to be fair, the marketing has helped to explain these characters and give us a little background on who they are, and there's also books and material that you can read to help you get more into these characters and what they're going to do in this movie. But that's if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan. There's nothing really obvious besides Darth Vader that's going to draw you in. The reason why we were so invested in uh, The Force Awakens is because we had these characters were somehow connected to the original trilogy characters, or even characters before then. Kylo Ren is the son of Han Solo and Leia, while also being the grandson of Darth Vader, while also being the nephew of Luke Skywalker, or Rey being the granddaughter of Obi-Wan Kenobi. We had connections to the original films and films coming after the original films. We had connections to the whole Star Wars universe, so we knew what we were kind of getting into. Coming in with these new characters that we know nothing about, they have no connections to the old cast, they might not even make it out of this movie alive. So we might, this might be the only time we get to know them. So that's a little disappointing. And the number three reason why I'm not excited for Rogue One, as to quote Pops from Luke Cage, forward always. Star Wars The Force Awakens helped us to move forward into the franchise. It was the first time ever that we've seen a film go forward. We got to see new technology, new things. Everything was new, but still familiar. In Rogue One, we're going backwards. Even further than we've gone um, in terms of the original trilogy, we're going before Episode Four, the first Star Wars film. And while that's not a bad thing, because we still love those movies and everything that was involved, and it's great to see this, the X-Wings, and the classic X-Wings, and Darth Vader, and the Death Star, and the, and the Imperials, and Stormtroopers. We've seen that before. I'm more curious about Episode 8, and what happened between Episode 6 and 7. I want to learn more about that time, rather than go back in time and learn about something we already kind of know about. I'm curious to see what happens between Episode 6 and Episode 7, and then beyond Episode 7, Episode 8. Maybe if you wanted to do an Old Republic or something even before Episode 1, I, I just want to go forward. I'm not concerned about going backwards in the Star Wars saga. I'm concerned about going forward. Forward. Always. And I don't mind just going back in time for some of these spin-off movies. I'm perfectly fine with it. But Star Wars The Force Awakens got us so enthralled with new questions, new possibilities for the future of the franchise, and then they brought us back in time. And now we gotta wait another year before we can go forward again. It's just frustrating, because I'm so enthralled with these new characters. And I want to learn more about Finn, and Rey, and Luke, and... Leia, and what they're gonna do now that Han Solo is dead? What's the plot of Episode 8? What's Snoke gonna do? What Kylo Ren is gonna do? I have questions about the future, not the past. The past has already been solved! Let's move on, guys! And as to quote Steven Spielberg on Indiana Jones 4, I'm done with the original trilogy! It was great! Let's walk away! Come on! So yeah, those are my three reasons why I'm not excited for Rogue One. And now, I, I said at the beginning of this video that not has quotations. Not excited for Rogue One, because, to be honest and to be fair, I am excited for Rogue One. And here are some reasons why. The number one reason that's getting my butt in the seat is Darth Julius Vader. His middle name is not Julius, but if he had a middle name, I'm sure it would be Julius. Maybe, I don't know. The last time we saw Darth Vader on screen was in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and that was a pretty disappointing return for the character. He basically asked for Padme was, cried, and then looked up into the stars at the new Death Star that was being built. Or the original Death Star. It wasn't new, it was old. It was the first! The first Death Star! Ha ha! So, yeah. A very disappointing last, uh, presumed at that time, last time we'd see Darth Vader on the big screen. And we're gonna see him again, and that's really exciting. And it's rumored that we're gonna see him in his prime, chop it down rebels with his lightsaber, which is a Darth Vader I've wanted to see for a very, very long time. So that's one reason to be really excited for this movie. The promotional material, as I said, has done a great job at helping us get to know these characters. Jin Erso seems like a great Joan of Arc type character that's going to be legendary in the Star Wars universe going forward. They'll probably reference her in things like Rebels, even in the new films like Episode 8 or Episode 9. Or remember the time when uh, the legendary Jin Erso stole the planets of Death Star and saved us all? 
you know, stuff like that is really exciting. The idea of Jeddah being this planet where people go on Jedi pilgrimages and, and Donnie Yen's character is someone who is connected to the Force but not particularly a Jedi, that's exciting. A lot of, a lot of things. I could go on and on about why I am excited for Rogue One. To sum this whole thing up, Star Wars The Force Awakens got us really jazzed for the future of Star Wars and to go backwards was a little jarring for me. Um, however, this is the original trilogy timeline we're going back to. And one other reason why I'm super excited is because we're going to get this. TIE Fighters and X-Wing Fighters shooting each other down in space! Oh man, I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed for that. That alone. There's rumors that we might get C-3PO and R2-D2 as well. They're pivotal to the Star Wars universe and it would almost be criminal not to include them in a Star Wars film. So that will add to my excitement if they are in this movie. Also, the fact that this movie is going to connect minutes before the original Star Wars is really exciting. I think if you're going to tell a Star Wars spin-off prequel story in that time period between episode 3 and 4, this is the most important story to tell. The, pl the story of how they got those plans and what set the events of Star Wars in motion. And that is the main reason why I am excited for Rogue One. Whew! That was a lot to talk about. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching this special video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel down below where you can check out my short films, my trailer reactions, and the Vince Lano podcast, which will be resuming in 2017. I'm going to see Rogue One this weekend with my brother, continuing our tradition. And uh, we're going to have our review up, hopefully by next week. We'll see. Weekends are really busy for me because I'm going around seeing friends. I'm home. All right, guys. Well, look forward for more Christmas videos on my channel. Thank you all for watching. God bless. Merry Christmas. Peace out. And may the Force be with you. Always.